Okay, I'd like to call a Garden Grove City Council meeting to order. Madam Clerk, would you please call a roll? Council Member Beard? Here. Council Member Broadwater? Here. Council Member Jones? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Wynn? Here. Mayor Dalton? Here. He will have the invocation by Kingsley Okariki, the Finance Director, and Pledge of Allegiance by Councilman Beard. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for the gathering tonight. We pray that you may guide us as we consider the items on the agenda tonight. Amen. Amen. Please place the flag right hand over your heart. Repeat after me. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we did have a closed session item, but there was no reportable action taken. And the next item is a presentation. Yes, Mr. Mayor, we have a special presentation by Elaine May to uh, present on our gender equity uh, programs for our recreation programs. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of the City Council. The Community Services Department is pleased to share with you information regarding Assembly Bill 2404, or AB 2404, Achieving Gender Equity in City Recreation Programs. In 2005, California became the first state in the nation to enforce the civil rights of girls and community athletics in local jurisdictions and special districts. Youth sports activities such as baseball, basketball, and soccer can make a difference <coughs> in the overall quality of life in any city or community. Prior to Assembly Bill 2404, cities had little guidance identifying criteria to ensure non-discriminatory practices in youth sports programming, equal access to fields, resources, and playtime. What is AB 2404? It essentially expands Title IX guidelines which schools must follow to receive federal funding. This offers a how-to guide to cities regarding avoiding discrimination in youth sports activities. During the past several years, cities have faced lawsuits that alleged discrimination in providing equal opportunities for girls' softball teams when compared to boys' little league programs. These are factors the courts would examine to determine whether or not there are gender equities. Cities and or counties should accommodate the athletic interests of both genders by demonstrating that male and female participation in sports is substantially proportionate to the gender breakdown of the community and by demonstrating the community has a history and continuing practice of advancing opportunities for an underrepresented gender. To comply with AB 2404, cities should conduct a self-evaluation, designate an anti-discrimination coordinator, develop an anti-discrimination policy, and develop grievance procedures regarding the policy. To avoid litigation and pitfalls of discrimination, cities should take preventative measures, which is what we've done. Through our self-evaluation, staff researched other cities that have implemented anti-discrimination policies and used them as guides. We developed a survey for youth that included questions about the type of sports programs they currently participated in and what type of sports programs they would like to participate in. Through these surveys, we can identify gaps in youth sports programs and address them accordingly. Through our assessment, staff collaborated with the Boys and Girls Clubs of Garden Grove who were able to disseminate the surveys to nearly 50 sites throughout Garden Grove. 
We distributed 1,000 surveys in English, Spanish, and Vietnamese with a 60% return rate. In addition, youth in our own city programs, as well as third-party users, were surveyed. The top three extracurricular activities as identified by the youth were soccer, football, and baseball, all of which are currently being offered in Garden Grove through outside leagues such as AYSO, <coughs> All-American Football, and Little League. All three sports are available to both boys and girls. Our assessment also included city, city facilities and fields being assessed. City fields are currently used by both male and female groups and teams without any preferential treatment for one over the other. Current field usage policies do not list gender as a factor to approve field use. And in all youth sports programming, whether it's provided by the city or an outside league, all coaching is conducted by parent volunteers, providing equal opportunities for coaching to both boys and girls. Garden Grove has anti-discriminatory laws in place that extend to community services programs similar to other cities. In addition, staff developed an internal policy as a reminder of the importance of gender equity and a grievance procedure that includes hearings in front of the Parks and Recreation Commission. It is the policy of the Community Services Department to encourage youth participation in sports and recreation programs and to provide opportunities to youth for recreation to ensure the department is equitable in its distribution of resources for all youth, to ensure regular monitoring of program participation rates by gender, and to utilize results to define priorities for program expansion to address underrepresentation in sports programs where one gender or another might not adequately be represented. In conclusion, the Community Services Department has implemented a gender equity policy, identified an anti-discrimination coordinator, and instituted a grievance procedure. Garden Grove is a step ahead by having done this assessment, created an internal policy, and is working on a process to continue tracking <coughs> this data each year through our own sports programs. Garden Grove will continue to do surveys each year until 2015. With this, the City of Garden Grove is compliant three years earlier than AB 2404's deadline of 2015. This concludes our presentation. Are there any questions? Any questions? Do the little boys get to play girls softball? <coughs> yes, they do. I'm glad to hear that. And vice versa. <laughs> Good job. Actually, I was just uh, at the gym the last few days, and I saw the basketball teams with boys and girls on them, and uh, um, it actually made some of the girls better players because they were playing against the boys who aren't as timid sometimes as some of the girls are, and I think it was good. Mm -hmm. um, my granddaughter scored about 14 or 17 points, so she, she felt it was really good. And there was a couple of boys that were taller than her. but So I think it's working. I think you're doing a great job, and thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, at this time I'll open uh, oral communications for the council. Uh, the agency and the successor agency. In the same district. Yes. Okay. Dick Prinsler. And the Sand District, you're right. Evening, Mr. Mayor, Council. I'm here today to find out what the heck you're going to do with those two pieces of property you bought on Harbor Boulevard for those substations to be built. One of them, I understand, you can't even put a fire truck on it. Is that right? Can I answer this question? The other is the money that was loaned to the sanitation or the sewer a couple years ago, and then they told us that we couldn't, wouldn't use that money for anything other than for the sewers, and he ended up borrowing a million dollars on it to pay off a loan for your Measure M money. 
that was on harbor. Has that money ever been repaid? Go ahead. We'll address everything. And, at one and, time. and the last thing is this here trapeze thing we got over here on the corner of I hate to say it, trapeze, but that's just about what it looks like on the corner of Brookhurst and Garden Grove Boulevard. When is that going to be taken down or be completed? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Peggy Bergen. Happy Valentine's all, and in as much as I don't have a Valentine anymore, I can be here happy as a lark and I'm not missing anything. Well, basically, I have a couple of questions about the successor agency in 5A and 5B that we're still buying property for other corporations to um, benefit from. I still don't understand why it is the city's responsibility redevelopment or successor agency to assemble the properties, tying up our funds and time of the staff to buy for these hotel projects. If they are such a golden opportunity for the profit, I would think they could buy them themselves. If I remember when Disneyland came to Orange County, he bought all of that on his own. He didn't buy it in the name of Disney. He bought it in the name of Joe Blow and Tom Swift. And when it came time to Disney, buy Bill Disneyland, he just changed the name. Now, I would think if these hotels were such a golden egg, golden goose laying the golden egg, they could buy them themselves, and they could send people out here to buy their own property. Uh, but thank you for the asbestos and lead paint, uh, asbestos uh, abatement and testing that's going to be done when these houses are bought and removed. Thank you very, very much for that. That is something definitely in very important to our community that everything in this city that's torn down is checked because 99% of everything in this city that is going to be torn down in the next 40 years was built before 1957 where there was absolutely blatant use of asbestos in everything. Now this, this is also the successor agency. Appropriating funds towards the completion of water park hotels parking structure. Isn't, now my question is, isn't it the responsibility of any one building um, or uh, buildings to provide adequate parking for their own? When I went to get a room addition on my house, the first question they asked me was, how adequate is your parking for your residential unit? I, I passed the cutoff, so I was fine, but I had to provide that. No one came along and said, okay, we'll do whatever needs to be done. So I find that kind of a surprise that we're, we're working at funding that for them. Uh, so isn't this park looking forward to making a lot of money? So why is it our city's job to pay for things that are required by the city to be built? So that is all I have on that is the, the basic oral communications. But now I, tonight is quite a, an important meeting, I think, for most of the citizens of the city, which obviously they did not realize how important it is. But anyways, um, I'm sitting here looking at last week's journal, Garden Grove Journal, which is a newspaper that's supposed to highlight events coming up in our city. This is the Monday uh, edition of the Register, and it tells us that in Garden Grove, there's going to be a senior dance in 10 days. Nothing about a meeting having to do with water and sewer rates. Uh, the, uh, I guess this was Tuesdays. It's about an ongoing meeting for dementia a family support group that is ongoing twice a month. Both of these things could have been put off till Thursday or later to be go in. So now I am going to read for the rest of my time. Uh, let me see, where did I lo lose them again? These are from some of the protest letters I rent in the staff report having to do with our sewer and water increases, which I think are very, very important because these are people that didn't couldn't come here, and a lot of them from the writing, I could see that they were elderly, very elderly. So, uh, and I do have the names and addresses of the people that I, I quoted these from, so if anyone's curious, I'm not making this up. My memory says that they, the city officials, told us all this new construction, hotels, and expensive houses 
would provide additional revenue taxes to cover future demands on the city services. I don't think anyone believed it, but the building went on. Many comments of where, and then this was in a separate thing, many comments had to do with where is the inflation when people are losing homes and jobs and banks aren't even paying interest. Also, many retired are on fixed incomes. So where is this massive inflation that we need these increases? And somewhere in our reports that I read diligently over the last weekend, it shows that we are holding our own with our sewer and water rates right now. But we are doing this for future needs. You know what? The future may never come. Who knows what's going to happen next month or next year? Why are we always so concerned on taking parking off main streets for the future? Doing everything in the future. Another letter. Residents of Garden Grove should not be held accountable for the lack of planning. Now, I did not say this, so this is not my fault. Residents of Garden Grove should not be held accountable for the lack of planning and the inability to manage expenses by the city of Garden Grove leadership. Okay. Uh, this is from a commercial food chain that does pay taxes and is a very popular uh, icon around the world. One commercial food enterprise stated that their bi-monthly bill a few years ago was less than $200. Now his average is 650 to 750. These increases in rates has become a huge burden. Why he wants to know is his rate the same as a hotel at $252.32 a, a, a billing cycle. Thank you. Would you kind of wrap okay. it up? You're running this, out of I've time. got full, three more lines with this one. Okay. With hundreds of toilets, sinks, and showers in these hotels, while he has two to four toilets and two sinks, excluding the kitchen area. Also, the resident inside the hotel pay no sewer fees. So why? Why? Yeah, thank you. Charles Mitchell. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council and staff. Happy Valentine's Day to everyone. I hope that uh, Cupid's arrows found their mark. And speaking of finding a mark, I'll go into the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune at this council meeting. Now, first of all, I want to thank a member of the city staff because the last time I spoke at the council meeting a lot of my questions were recorded and Mr. David Ensminger, the water services manager, followed up and contacted the Metropolitan Water District to find out what was going on as far as their reserves and I have a printout of his answers that he got from Harvey De La Torre at the Water District. And it seems that the Water District Board of Directors decided that the district needed to have a reserve of from 200 to 450 million dollars. And at this time, the reserves are $215 million, which is $15 million just over their minimum. Now, I don't know if this is going to cover what they need because their ongoing costs uh, yearly are an approximately $385 million. So the reserve may not be enough to cover what their expenses are if they don't have the revenue that they anticipate. And I'm not sure that that's a legitimate reason for them to raise the rates to all the uh, participants in their water program. Uh, going on from there, a few years ago, the Authorization was given to issue bonds for over $50 million for the sanitary district. This was to take care of repairs and upgrades to our system. Well, 
At this point, only 30 million of that bond issue has been issued. And as chairman of the Sanitary Advisory Commission, I asked if they were going to be using the additional 20 million, and I was told, well, revenues are at the point now where we are not going to need to issue the additional $20 million to take care of the repairs and upgrades. So if the revenue is enough to take care of ongoing repairs and additional uh, work on the sewer system, then it seems to me that uh, they probably are not in need of raising the rates to take care of uh, their ongoing service to the community. Now, one of the things that we have accomplished in the city is we are over our 50% mark on recyclables. People have been doing the right thing. They've been using the right containers. And our trash collector has been able to uh, <coughs> arrive at a large sum of money with the recyclables enough that they give the city $60,000 every year for communities. Now, this may be a part of the agreement initially established with him, but I was wondering exactly how much money the recycling program is accountable to the Republic Company, and if perhaps uh, some of that money might be used to offset the increase in sewer rates. Thank you. Thank you. Joshua McIntosh. Good evening, members of the council, Mayor Dalton. Good evening, everyone in our audience tonight. My name is Josh McIntosh, and I'm a fourth generation Garden Grove homeowner. I'm giving you an encore presentation tonight because the last time I was up here, the camera wasn't rolling, and I think the folks at home got cheated out a little bit. So at this point, I'd like to check with Channel 3. Are we rolling? Okay, I hope so. I've decided to share my Valentine's evening with all of you in the city that I love and live in, our Garden Grove. I'm here tonight to once again speak my, share my concerns towards the city and the future of our historic gem theater. Since the fire occurred in May of last year, the gem has been left vacant and has been, for most of the part, neglected by the city. It's been subject to vandalism, and in terms that the, the city council would be familiar with, it could be considered blighted. The gym is just two blocks away from where we're all gathered tonight. It's located in the heart of our city on our historic Main Street, which is what most people would consider the face of the city, our most visible feature. This is a popular area of town, and I would expect the city to be more proactive, to be more concerned, and more diligent in maintaining the appearance of a city-owned property which has been an iconic part of historic Main Street. It is, in my opinion, and many other residents of Garden Grove, that the gem has not been fully utilized to the best of its capabilities. We have a city-owned venue, which was given an exclusive management contract to a company, <laughs> which has never effectively reached out to the public for additional sources of revenue or provided any types of alternative productions other than their own plays, which are not really keeping it busy. In recent times when it was operational, the gym theater was rarely in use and bringing on, in only a limited income. Left to its own devices without being owned by the city, it would have failed in the real world economy. It has only survived because of our tax money and I think it's time for a change. I'm urging the city to take two very important steps. The first would be to renovate our theater and bring it back into operation. The second would be a change in the direction of how it's managed and utilized. With regards to the renovation of the Gem Theater, I strongly suggest that we return it back to the original, beautiful 1920s Art Deco facade. Our theater would not only regain a more attractive appearance, but also its historical significance. The current design of the building lends no character or charm. The current design was resemble more of a bomb shelter than a cultural art center. For years, we've had an amazing Art Deco theater, which is the kind of place you'd remember that you went to. It was really something special. What we have now, besides the marquee, is just this boring, stucky, stucco building with no character or curb appeal. As a returning volunteer judge for our city's Home Pride Awards, these are things that I happen to notice. 
The current design of the gym is not exactly helping to draw in more patrons or business. I think that while we're renovating the interior of the theater, we should also improve the exterior, give it a fresh new look worthy of the name, the gym. And as much as I feel the appearance of the gym stands to improve, I also feel more importantly that the management and the direction of the gym needs to improve. One more Productions, who've had the exclusive control over our city's venue, are only using the theater for about 50% of the year, and the rest of the time, it's not being put to use. I previously discussed the possibilities of returning the gym into a movie theater with the manager, Mr. Damian Lawton, but he was not interested in making any changes to the gym. As the years go by and I look at the empty theater each day on my way to work, my feelings just grow stronger and stronger about this. I'm asking the city to seriously consider revamping our theater to again include scheduled motion picture shows and live entertainment available to the public in addition to the one more time production scheduled season. I know that our theater would be a regular draw for Main Street and something that our residents and out-of-towners would enjoy. The gym could be a glamorous, successful art house theater such as the Bay and Seal Beach or the New Art in Los Angeles. We should be showing films here at least every weekend. We have 170 seats empty on Main Street daily. We could have them filled with ticket holders. They might come from another city or county. They might even rent one of our many hotel rooms just to come and see their favorite film shown on the big screen again. Maybe they'll have dinner on Main Street at one of our fine restaurants. People, should, people could spend an entire evening in Garden Grove instead of leaving it to spend their money elsewhere. In addition to showing films the one more time production plays, we have the perfect location to hold business seminars, meetings, live music performances, stand-up comedy shows, auctions, award ceremonies, beauty pageants, and there's so many more options. Unfortunately, one more, pro one more Productions has historically been resistant or just ineffective in making any of this a reality. We have an existing venue. Oops, I'm on the red. I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead. You wrap it up real quick, Josh. Okay. One last thing. We have an upcoming Garden Grove Independent Film Festival, August 17th through the 19th. I'm sure you remember last year's was a total embarrassment to the city. It was a disaster. We need to make it a lot better this year. We've got the possibility to bring in thousands of dollars. Let's make it work this year. Okay, thank you. Tony Flores. Good evening, Mayor, Council, Staff. I'm Tony Flores. I haven't been here uh, this year. It's my first time in 2012, so Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, I'm a little tardy in this, but uh, Ms., uh, Mrs. D is it Mrs. M uh, Dina Wynn sent me a uh, Christmas card, so thank you. Got it. I left you a message saying thank you. Happy New Year. In any case, uh, moving on, the city's done a great job putting together their website. A lot of information that's on there. We need to take one more step if we could. That's to put on the, uh, the campaign statements that uh, you folks have to file, not just your statement of economic interest, but your, your campaign statement. A lot of us that do research would like to know where the uh, dollars are coming from, where the campaign dollars are coming from, and if, in fact, uh, there is political influence, or if there's not. You know, there could be, it could not be. But if you could put that on the website, that'd be great. You're already putting other information on there. Take one more step and uh, get that information on there. Um, I received a, a letter. Uh, about our illustrious city manager, Mr. Matt Fertel. The problem is somebody sent it to me, didn't put their name on it, just a concerned citizen, and it had to do with uh, an accusation, uh, alleged uh, nepotism in our city. I'm sure you may have seen it, maybe you haven't, Matt, but there's a number of names on here, and, and again, because it's, it's, there's no name on it, I'm hesitant to even get into it, and there may or may not be issues on here. If we do have a nepotism issue in City Hall, then we need to address it. If we don't, then, then so be it. But it um, it, it just um, it, it lends to the fact that some of the things that we have been doing and some of the areas that we do have other, um, I guess, family or connections in. And I think uh, with the, the things that we're trying to do in the City of Garden Grove with the budget, perhaps, we may make, may make some, some cuts. Um, and if this potential issue may play into that issue later on where we're not making the proper cuts or things that need to be done uh, for our citizens, then there's going to be a problem. I'm still looking into this, trying to find out where this came from, who sent it to me, but like I said, if it's, uh, 
If it's factual, there's a problem. If it's not, then, then there isn't. But we'll be checking it out. There's a massage parlor on Lampson, just west of Valley View. I'm sure you folks have probably seen it. Maybe you've come to the grand opening. Anybody? No? Okay. Well, if it is what I think it is, we might need to get some enforcement in there. Uh, okay. Well, then I think we have a somebody who's saying, I haven't been there myself, but uh, maybe I should go investigate. <laughs> I'll submit my receipts to the city. But, but in any case, still, I, I think it needs to be looked at. The West Garden Grove Residence Association became involved in one that was at uh, Lampson and um, Manley a few years ago. And it was an issue. It was a problem. I was contacted by some of the owners, the business owners in that little strip mall, and we got that knocked out. I hope we don't have that problem here. Also, too, I noticed uh, just real quickly on the uh, on the hazmat bid, um, we have a, we didn't open it up, and it says here due to uh, the economic scale, maybe we've got a, some type of a, a break on it, but normally these things should go out to bid. Um, I do, in, in my job out in the harbor, get involved in some of these companies that are out there. This seems to be one of the ones, a good company, reputable company, but they're on the larger end of the financial scale, and we could probably do better than, than what uh, they're giving us. At least I hope we would, but I wouldn't know because we didn't put it out to bid. Any case, um, I'll be back uh, in a while in the public hearing. Good evening. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to close oral communications at this time. And did Bruce, you want to make some comments? Yeah. I'd like to comment about the uh, trapeze that the man talked about. <clears throat> it took me a minute to figure out what he was talking about, but uh, it's amazing that uh, I don't have your card, sir. How did I get cut out of this here? Just have the one for public hearing. Okay, go ahead, Bruce. You can go on, Broadway. I can go on and on and on. Okay, hold it down out there, will you? Trapeze. I, I do believe that that is the one building that has really been built by the public, by the private sector that doesn't seem to be working out very well. I mean, the government has been involved in a number of buildings around here that got built. But the private sector builds one, and it doesn't happen. It's really strange. It's going to cost about $2 million to take that building down if that doesn't happen. I don't know where that's going to come from. Maybe the private sector can pass the hat. But uh, anyway, I'm here to talk that they have a new uh, re developer, and it may work, and it may, they may get it going. It may work out yet already. Anyway, thank you. Okay, then let's see. I'll uh, recess the council and go to the uh, successor agency to the Garden Grove Agency for Community Development bus Business. I think I got that right. Yes. If not, correct me. Madam Clerk, do you want to call roll? Member Beard? Here. Member Broadwater? Here. Member Dalton? Here. Member Jones? Here. Member Wynn? Here. Uh, okay, consent items 2A, uh, resolution of the City Garden Grove as successor agency to the Garden Grove Agency for Community Development, approving successor agency meeting schedule, appointing successor agency staff, and authorizing contracting authority. Motion. That's the only consent item. Do I have a motion? I'll move. Second. Second. Call the vote. Motion received, five yes votes. Uh, An organization selection of chair and vice chair. I think we're going to make Jones the chairman. Second. Call the vote. Okay. Call the vote. Motion received, five yes votes. I think we should keep the vice chair. Is uh, that Councilman Beard? Beard? Yeah. Beard okay. Second. Call the vote. Uh, I need some clarification. Okay, at what point are we choosing who represents the at city the on at the council meeting? Okay, so we yeah, this is this just all out of the way first. Correct. Right. Yeah, not on. Okay. Yeah. You had a motion and a second. Yep. Call yeah. the vote. Mary, um, your button didn't work. Motion received. Five yes votes. 
No public hearing items. We do have a couple items for consideration. If we can get a report. Uh, Mr. Chair, your first item is to consider purchasing property at 125551 Twin Tree Lane in connection with the Site C Hotel project. And Greg Blodgett is here to give a staff report on this item. Mr. Chair, members of the successor agency, tonight we have your consideration acquisition of 12551 Twin Tree Lane. On June 24, 2011, the agency approved a DDA with Land and Design, the developer for development of a 300 room to 400 room upper upscale hotel. In addition, a limited service hotel with three to 400 rooms and also 65,000 square feet of retail dining and entertainment space. Land and Design DDA is an enforceable obligation and requires the agency to continue to assemble the rest of the site and convey the property to the developer. Um, the property has been negotiated uh, with the owner. The owner came to the agency to sell, and the purchase price, the terms are as follows. <coughs> the purchase price is $390,000. Escrow is to close within 180 days. And the owner has agreed to waive relocation benefits. So at this time, staff recommends that the successor agency approve the acquisition and authorize the director on behalf of the agency, the city manager on behalf of the successor agency to execute a purchase and sale agreement and related documents, authorize the secretary and city clerk to accept the grant deed, and authorize the finance director to draw a warrant in amount of $390,000 of funds necessary for, and funds necessary for closing, and also authorize agency directors and city manager to execute agreements for asbestos, lead paint testing, asbestos, and lead paint abatement and demolition to the lowest responsible bids. That concludes my staff report. Thank you. Any questions of staff? No, he, he got it out that that was something we were committed to do. I did hear him say that. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Similar to 5B coming up. I'll move the issue. Second. Call the vote. Motion Adam. received five yes votes. <laughs> Item 5B. Uh, uh, you're right, uh, Mr. Chairman. 5B is almost identical to 5A. It's a second home. Uh, it's part of the Site C uh, development, and the purchase price is $390,000. So we recommend you take the same action. Second. Call the vote. Motion received, five yes votes. Um, and item 5C. Uh, 5C is related to the Water Park Hotel project, and Greg Blodgett will give a brief staff report on this item. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the successor agency, the purpose of this report is to request the successor agency assume the funds are set aside in furtherance of the Garden Grove MXD Incorporated DDA, which is an enforceable obligation pursuant to AB 26. Uh, section 4.8 of the DDA provides in consideration for granting of uh, covenants by the developer to the agency and provide developer agency shall pay the developer an all cash sum of $47 million and in addition $5 million concurrent with the commencement of the uh, parking structure. Uh, so staff is recommending that the successor agency set aside these funds in a restricted fund of $5 million pursuant to this section of the approved DDA with Garden Grove MXD uh, Inc. This concludes my staff report. Any questions of staff? Did you say the, the larger sum is also due upon commencement of construction or not till later? The 42 million will be due upon the opening of the hotel. Right, okay. The 5 million is due upon the pulling of the permit for the parking structure. Gotcha. I have a question for staff. Just to further clarify the question that Peggy had, uh, this is money that we had to turn over to the successor agency anyway that we wouldn't, the city wouldn't get to keep. That's correct? Well, under the agreement with the Water Park Hotel developer, we're required to set this money aside. If we don't, then uh, the monies would uh, be forwarded on to the county. So we're not out of pocket. Basically, um, either we forward it onto the county or yeah, we keep it for our own it. project. And this is an opportunity for us to keep it for our own project because we had a previous commitment. Correct. Okay, thank you. 
Just a quick comment. So it's an enforceable obligation, and let's just clarify um, just a quick review of the benefits of the project. It's We're talking about over a quarter of a billion dollars investment, private, and then public partnership. It's a lot different than the uh, – than the building on Broad on Brookhurst and Garden Grove Boulevard, and uh, how many jobs does this represent? Over seven hundred jobs potentially for this water park. Okay, maybe it, as much as eight million in total tax revenue per year. Any other comments, motions? Mm -hmm. Moved to issue. Second. Motion received. Five yes votes. Any matters from uh, successor agency members? No. See a none. We'll adjourn back to City Council. <coughs> okay. At this time, uh, let the record show that the uh, all members of the Sanitary District uh, Board are present, and <coughs> we'll go to item three A. We'll also convene the Council at the same time. That's correct. Three A on the. Sanitary District and 7A on the Council. Yeah, Mr. Mayor and Mr. President, uh, since we do have two uh, public hearings consisting of uh, uh, potential uh, rate increases on both the sewer and the water, we're going to have one staff report and we're going to combine the public hearings. So um, Bill Murray is here to give a joint staff report on both of these items. Thank you, Mr. Fertel. Mr. President and Mayor, members of the District Board, of directors and city council. Tonight, staff is asking you to consider proposed water rate adjustment for the city's water fees and the district sewer fees for the next five years. The rate adjustments are to provide for inflation factors often referred to as the consumer price index or CPI. And in the case of the water uh, fee, the adjustment will also provide for changes in wholesale water costs to the city. <coughs> These adjustments are required if we were able to if we are to keep the sewer and water counts from falling into an <coughs> undesirable state that will harm our ability to maintain our systems and provide our customers a safe service as required by federal and state law. It should be noted that the CPI has increased about 2.5% annually over the last five years, and we expect that trend to continue in the near future. However, should there not be an increase in inflation or a path through water costs, then there will be no increase in fees to our rate pay. <coughs> In accordance with Proposition 218, the public has been duly noticed of the rate adjustments and of the public hearing to be held tonight. Therefore, it is recommended that the public hearings be open for comments on the proposed adjustments. Following the close of the hearings, the city clerk will determine whether there has been a majority protest of the adjustment uh, ordinances. And uh, provided that there is not a majority protest, staff recommends that the sanitary district board adopts the ordinance authorizing the sewer rate adjustments and that the city council introduce and conduct the first reading of the ordinance authorizing adjustment of the water rates due to CPI and wholesale pass-through increases. For the, ti uh, for the record, the title of the sewer ordinance is an ordinance of the Garden Grove Sanitation District affirming established sewer user fees for sewer services within Garden Grove Sanitary District Service Area, clarifying existing provisions and authorizing future automatic adjustments in sewer user fees to account for inflation. And the title of the water ordinance is an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Garden Grove amending section 14.12.010 of chapter 14.12 of title 14 parenthetically water, of the municipal code relating to water rates and charges. This concludes staff's report, and I'm available to answer any questions you may have. Any question for staff? What does CPI stand for? Consumer Price Index. That's just the general uh, term for inflation. Is, is it actually based on CPI or it's based on CCI? The, the actual stuff that we're going to be using will be a uh, construction part of that. So... Uh, out of the engineering news record. Hey, Ms. Wynn, go ahead. Yes, how do you account for inflation just on the CPI or on other indexes or other um, circumstances? The, the actual 
part of the CPI that we look at will be related to construction costs only. And that what is not calculated. It is uh, that is published. What construction cost? Uh, con uh, well, the general uh, cost of construction throughout the country uh, is what what determines what that co cost inflation is, and uh, that is a rate that is published by the engineering news record. Usually, how much is that a year? About, about two and a half percent a year on average. For, this has been running for about the last five years. So it's not based on the consumer index, but based on the construction, that type of construction index. It's, it's a part of it. If you, if you were to break the consumer price index down into various parts, you'd get to a construction component of it, and that's ex specifically what we're using. So if Most people understand CPI, so that's what we refer to. So if the consumer um, index rate is down, would the rate be down also? Yes. Or, or non-existent. If, if, say, inflation is zero next year, there would not be any increase in the rates. Um, okay. And then um, are you basing this only on that or any other factor? Only on that. The only other factor will apply to water, and that is if we have an increase in our wholesale water costs. So we have two things that will trigger an in increase. One is the consumer rate index, which is tied into this construction index. And the second is if the water supplier raised the rate on us, then we would like, uh, well, the proposal would pass that on proportionally to our resident. Correct. Okay. Okay, any other questions for staff? Okay, if not, I'll open the public hearing. David Lotherborn. I want to do this right, and it's awfully hard. So I'll begin with the people of Garden Grove, Mayor. Council, staff. I've been a resident of Garden Grove for 49 years. The day I moved in was November 22nd, 1963. Does anybody know what that, what was that significant day? That was the day that John F. Kennedy was shot and killed. I was born and raised in Hawaii. I was there for WW2, the December 7th. I was there when the Korean War started out, part of the National Guard, and I was posted to head over to Korea. I didn't get to go. Now I moved to Garden Grove in 1963. The Dyke Water Company owned the water rights. Four dollars for six months of water, as much as I could use. Four dollars. Six months later, they found it necessary to raise it to nine dollars because they was having city conflicts and we the citizens of of Garden Grove property owners agreed to it six months later the city took over the water district with the idea that they were going to make money and we weren't going to pay any enormous rate just a few more dollars well, I'm 74 now. I'm on a fixed income. Social Security, less than $40,000 to live on every year. That's to support the wife and I. And now I have my grandson who is out of the Army and disabled. Now you're going to increase my water rates, my trash rates, my sewer rates, my uh, whatever, street sweepers, combined 
sweep up the street. Interesting. The streets are damaged. They need repaired. When do we repair them? I'm damaged. I'm damaged by the hotels, the parking. They filled their parking lot that I was told they had ample parking by city council. That wouldn't happen. I have buses running day and night. Trash trucks, ding, 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 ding. Three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning. All of these things are taking away my liberties. The peace and tranquility is gone. The flowers for Garden Grove are gone. We had an ex-mayor that called this garbage grove. Can you believe that garbage grove? He sat there in that conference room and called it garbage grove. And Mr. Broadwater was in the same room with him. That was an insult. This city was beautiful then. It's not no more. Drive down Harbor Boulevard. It's the pits. Empty lots, crap housing. We're going to develop that. How many years is this going to take? We got three hotels. We took people out of their trailers from the Oasis Park and relocated them. Some died from the stress. Hear me out. We senior citizens can't afford the 2% raise. We just got a Social Security raise that disappeared in the cost of living. The gasoline is at $4 a gallon. My Lord. When I moved here, it was 25 cents. Give us a break. Look at every avenue before you throw the gauntlet in to take our money away from us. Thank you. Rush McDonald. Good evening, Mayor, Council. I'm here this evening to protest the rate increases uh, on both sewer and water. Um, I, I, you know, my money tree died when I retired. I can't afford to keep on these rate increases all the time. I heard some gentleman over here talking about uh, uh, things went up 2.1 or 2.5 percent uh, uh, raise uh, each year, but that's all right. That's construction stuff. What about us? You know, we're sitting here on fixed incomes of Social Security. We didn't get a raise every three or four years. We finally got one this year, but we're so far behind, we'll never catch up. And this guy here wants a, a, a rate increase every year? No, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. You know, I'm so sick and tired of stuff that you guys are pulling up here. I hope we vote you all out next time you're up for re-election, okay? That's how cotton-picking angry I am with this. I, I, it just seems like you think we're the bottomless pit? You think that we got money to pull out for you guys all the time? No, we don't. Here's my two written... Sorry. Thank you very much. Hey, Dick Prinsler. Okay. Mike Dahl. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, uh, City Council, and the Sanitary Board. Uh, my wife and I have been, well, I've been a resident of Garden Grove for 31 years, my wife for virtually all of her life. And uh, I protest and she protests the automatic adjustments in the water and sewer rates. We believe in a time of recession with growing unemployment and underemployment that we feel the city must work to control and maintain rates at a minimum 
to no increase and not have an automatic license to increase rates with no cap. It's frightening, frightening to think that increases are proposed that um, can happen without any notification to the citizens. My family has experienced over a 60% decrease in income over the past five years. We know many other families who ex have experienced a decrease in earnings or loss of employment altogether. Yet we're blind, we are asked to blindly give the city council and the sanitary uh, district the power to reach into our pockets when they feel it is necessary. This does not sit right with those of us everyday Garden Grove citizens. Where are these funds to come from? From the residents who do not receive increases to their income. Family incomes have been reduced, yet prices for everything continue to go higher. With no cap, how, uh, how high can rates go? And how do we know these increases are really warranted? This issue seems to lack transparency, transparency and gives the board too much authority to act on our behalf without our knowledge. Um, the other thing to add to it also is, you know, we strive now to keep our yards and lawns maintained, keep them green, and with the increase in water rates, it makes it that much more difficult. And if we don't keep our yards nice and green, then we'll get cited for that. Um, thank you for the opportunity to address this matter. Thank you. Verlo Lambert. Verlo Lambert, longtime resident of Garden Grove. We moved here in 57. I got to fix my teleprompter here. The only problem with this teleprompter, I had to write my own notes. Yes. I'm here to voice an objection to the sewer and water usage fees. When seniors and others on Social Security had to go two years without an increase, that makes three years of living at the same rate of pay. Is that anything to do with the CPI, Consumer Price Index? It didn't affect my check, any. <laughs> I have, we did get a raise this year. I haven't even gotten my second check yet. And of course, needless to say, there's other things that have raised, like the one gentleman said, the gas in the car. And I really don't ride the bicycle too well anymore. It makes me wish for my septic tank back and a box of yeast. I remember those days. I didn't bake bread back then. I used my yeast for other things. This would be the time for all of you to make a few points with your citizens. After all the years that you've used your skills, negotiation skills in redevelopment, surely you can negotiate a stay of execution till we have a chance to use the turnaround in this hopeful economy. That's why you were elected, was to keep things like this under control. In reading some of the past minutes and past comments, just remember, Every word leaves its mark, so speak well or don't speak. Thank you. Thank you. Peggy Bergen. I haven't been living here quite as long as Verla, but I'm well over the 30-year mark. And um, my bills have dramatically increased, which is surprising because when I moved into my house in 78, I had three small boys, which basically loved dirt, a husband that was into construction, which meant lots of laundry, and I had a family baby a year after I moved to Garden Grove. So therefore, I had lots of water uses. And my bill is now two to three times more with less people. So that's not actually my, my whole topic here, but you know, this is from the 2007 financial plan, water rates adjustments, to help cities sustain its vital infrastructure. 
Now, I understand infrastructure. That's the roads we drive on, the sewers, the schools, the water, all of the things we all take for granted and believe will just keep happening and happening and happening. We all know that nothing is free anymore. We're learning valuable lessons. Now, this says, this is from the background section of the staff report. Under the 2007 Water Financial Plan, the city has uh, thus far been able to sufficiently meet all of its obligations relating to the operation and maintenance, capital improvement, financing, debt servicing, maintenance of service reserve funds, and compliance with federal and state mandated rules and regulations. These proposed increases, this was from the plan that was from 2007 to 2012, that we have, we have done, maintained, we have maintained with the, with the funding that has been coming in through our bills that we all pay. The proposed increased charges would run from July 2000, this year coming up, through July of 2016. The inflationary adjustments would be based on the annual percentage increase in construction costs based on the engineering news record, uh, news, yeah, record, construction cost index, Los Angeles area. This isn't from our area. I mean, I know most of our costs run the same. The average percent increase in the ENR for the last five years has been in the range of 2 to 3 percent. Then why would we even request that our increase would go up as far as 6 percent? If the average over the last five years has been 2 to 3 percent, why would we ask for a larger possible increase on a non- <coughs> We, we have no say over what happens once this passes for the next five years. So why would we want to okay something for more money than we anticipate? <laughs> and I do know from people that work in any type of building, they are so willing to help you work with things, they are actually cutting their own costs to make it cheaper to the people they are supplying to. So therefore, why are we only dealing with companies that Char charge us more every single time they want to do something. Anyone I talk to that works in construction, their bosses are cutting their, their profit margin and their rates so that they can keep their men working rather than laying them off and giving people more money per hour. Both the report and, and recommended in 2007 and 2008 are by the same company, Black and VTAC. So why, if we're getting a report on something that they didn't, why didn't we get a different person to do the report and see what his analysis is or their analysis? This is a massive company that we hired. It has 1,800 employees doing reports in 110 countries. So we're a drop in the bucket to them. We're not telling them, you know, in different company, in different countries. And I also did put, manage to pull up the population of Garden Grove's change over the years. The census in Garden Grove in 1990 was 1, uh, 143,000. In 2000, it was 165. In 2005, it was 166. And in 2010, like the 2000, uh, 1999, 1990, they were both from the census. It says we're 170. So basically speaking, you have been allowing our population of this city to go up for the last, what is that, uh, 20 years, and it's only now in the last eight years, eight to 10 years, you've decided we have to work on our infrastructure that was already aging 20 years ago. We're going to recover all of the ills of a larger population growth by the people living here now than all the people that were living here. The city council is always afraid to raise things because they might be voted out. And then all of a sudden it gets to the point of no return and all we do is raise, raise, raise. This will be, if, we, if this is passed, this will be 10 years of constant increase every six months to a year for this group of people. As everyone here says, my income is shattered. I was supposed to be retiring with two Social Security retirees and one pension person. My husband died, so that cuts my, my income in half. My bills haven't decreased. So thank you very much. I protested, and from all the letters I read in the report, 
everybody was a protest. There was not one letter that said, yippee, we get to pay more. Thank you. Tony Flores. Good evening, Mayor, Council, staff. I'm Tony Flores. I, too, am uh, protesting the uh, proposed uh, water and sewer rate increases. Uh, the first one, the, the rate increases, the May 29, 2007 notice that we received uh, on it, it had the fact that we had um, actually decreased our, our water uses by 7.7%. You remember that? We decreased it, and, and yet we, we raised our rates. Um, I'm wondering on this most recent notice, we didn't get that information, but according to uh, our Garden Grove Municipal Code, um, Title 14, 14.40.030, the city shall monitor the projected supply and demand for water by its customers on a daily basis uh, through the city manager, et cetera. In any case, I was wondering what our, our usage has been, and we just recently passed a water conservatory uh, municipal code. I think we're doing well. I know I'm not watering as much as I, I used to. In fact, I got a haul out of a dead plant this weekend. Uh, we, we've kind of cut a, a number of things. Uh, three, the, the budget, our city budget from 2010-2011. We actually say here that our, our new water rates under the uh, non-basic fund budgets are water rates. The adoption of the water financial plan and new water rates from the June 2007 enabled enabled the pre presented uh, fiscal year 2010-2011 balance budget. We are able to balance our budget from that particular increase. As far as the Orange County Water District, their financial budget, um, they basically went ahead and they went ahead and had some significant budget reductions. They actually cut quite a few uh, budget items but still had enough to support the necessary programs according to their, their budget. Maybe we need to do the same thing here. If we really do have a nepotism issue, and if nepotism is causing some of these jobs to be hanging around, we want to we want to start there. And if it's not that, we just talked about this agreement a while ago with the hotel. And again, this is my the third time that I've asked this question. Here's a uh, letter from this particular uh, financial analysis for this MX uh, Garden Grove MXD, where they said they're not they're not using the five million dollars. In this financial analysis, uh, it says here, and, I, and I'm, and I'm going to quote this, parking garage construction costs not included as they will be funded through a Malaroos. Through a Mal we don't have a Malaroos. How, where's this $5 million going to come from? That's another $5 million we could probably keep and use for our water infrastructure or our sewer infrastructure. I mean, we're, we don't have Malaroos, all right? Now, if we do have one, I'd like to see when it was passed. I think we need to get the answer to that. This is the third time I've asked for that. Uh, the uh, Midway set, uh, Midway Water, excuse me, uh, not Midway, oops, I lost my notes here. Here it is. Metropolitan Water District. In their board action dated May 10th of 2010, they talked about a 2% uh, salary increase uh, to help with their employees and their pensions and whatnot. It's going to cost $4.5 million, which they would have in turn said uh, the customers need to cough this up, but they didn't do that. This entire cost was offset by a then immediate elimination at 32 positions and, of course, as a result, did not impact their 2010-2011 budget and did not impact their 2010-2011 rates. October 2000, excuse me, 2010, October 12, 2010, Representative Loretta Sanchez was here in this very room given a legislative update. In that update, and by the way, uh, Loretta was the recipient of the Orange County Water District and the Orange County Sanitation District 2001 Water Visionary Award. Back then, she had a vision of water, apparently, even, and here it came through the groundwater replenishment system, which she said, and it's in this document as well, that our water, 85% of our water, comes from right here underneath us. Those are her words, and I, I don't believe she has to, I don't think she'd be lying about water. We're talking about water. Why would she lie about water, 85%. Any case, and then the NER, that's the uh, the engineering uh, record news. Yes, the construction costs, and, and well, they have two different, there's this consumer price index or the CPI, and the CCI, which is the current cost indices, it's 2.2%, 2.2% according to this record. And this is pulled off today's internet. Also, two. 
uh, we're talking about two LA Times articles. Back when, when we decided that we were going to take over the Garden Grove or create the Garden Grove Sanitary District, take it over for Midway City, we said that we could do it for cheaper and more efficient. Now, that was 1995. And we also said it again that the city officials were adamant, though, that they could do a better job for less because the city employees were already on the payroll and could take over the administration, administrative functions. Um, apparently, that's not true because we raised it quite a bit. And I'll finish up with this last one, Mr. Mayor. Consider those on fixed incomes, the elderly, and the overall needs of our citizens. And also consider the elimination, the elimination of incentives for the developers, incentives um, like this DDA we're giving up five million bucks. Consider those that are actually paid for by the taxpayer through what I believe are unnecessary increases in our rates, fees, charges, and assessments. We have some work to do. We'll be happy to, to help you out. I've made some recommendations on where we can get revenues and what we can do to still get our, our services out there but cut the budget as well. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Uh, Minakshi Brown. Two more. Do you, can you wait or not? Okay. So, Mr. Mayor and City Council, uh, I am here also to protest the proposed ordinances to automatically raise the water and uh, sewage rates. Um, I'm here on behalf of myself as well as the Lake Grove uh, condominium community where I am the HOA president. Um, we've collected statements of protest from our community, which I would like to give to you. And then I have some questions, general questions, um, that hopefully you can answer tonight, but if not, I can receive answers for soon. Um, first, uh, I understand that these ordinances are proposed at this time, but I'd like to know what will keep them from being passed. Uh, if they are passed, um, is there a way to get them overturned? And if so, what is it? Uh, I, uh, also, does the city have any programs, guidance, or support to help promote get gray water implementation specifically for condominium communities. Um, and then what can large communities do to minimize the financial impact of these increases? And then uh, I'd like to know, has the city done anything to negotiate with our wholesale water suppliers or research any alternative sources of water? And uh, just out of curiosity, I'd like to know how many statements of protest the city has received so far. And then uh, I'd also like, uh, like to ask you to just please reject these ordinances to automatically adjust our water and sewer rates. Um, clearly, it would present a financial burden to a lot of people in the city. Thank you. Thank you. Beatrice Foster. Mayor and City Council, I am um, have property on Taft Street. I've had for 27 years, and uh, I wasn't here to fight the last increase. I protest the water uh, rates and the sewer rates, and I see a very badly misuse of money when Taft Street in the last three years has been dug up, re all the asphalt gone down to all the pipes four times in a matter of a few months. And why is this being done? And I called the city one time. They forgot to uh, re-cement the sidewalk they tore up. And they didn't even put a barricade until I mentioned it's oh, look like it's ready for a lawsuit. And somebody finally did come out and put a barricade, which took them three weeks to put the sidewalk back together. So I'm definitely in protest until they can learn to budget their money a lot better. Thank you. Jose Gonzalez. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and uh, City of Garden Grove staff. My first time I come here to uh, City of Garden Grove. I have a couple questions to you guys. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm here to protest about the increase of the water. I want to ask you something, one of you guys. You have a property in Garden Grove. Let's say you have a family of three or four babies, you and your wife. You need a two room like too bad. You would take a shower, two to nine, you need a laundry, everything. How much water you will need for that? 
You don't need more water. How did the city garden girl want to see a beautiful house in the corner right here? Garden girl, like, like, uh, say, and that building, building right there in garden girl, brokers. I live by my neighbor, my house right there. All the house I see there is a mess. Why is a mess the house there? Because people there, they cannot afford the water anymore. Imagine one of you guys working in a factory making minimum wage. If you have the bill of 200 something, like my bill is now 163. If I make $200, 293 a week, how I can people can come excited to get the hose and water the front of the backyard? How the grass is going to be nice and everything? It looks messy everywhere. But if you see the water there, you, you get a saltation for that, the city. We are afraid to put one gallon of water right there on the front of the house to see a nice flower right there because of you guys. The city has to do something for us. Imagine an old, a old person, seven years old, retire and get and get Social Security. This pay, they, they pay almost this money is going to the bill, raising taxes here and everywhere. City uh, here going to ask money for everything. I used to pay fifty-eight dollar for my garbage disposal. Now it's one hundred nineteen dollar. People that are afraid and they fill it out everything. And when the truck comes to pick it up trash, they cannot see the thing there empty. They have to be specific because they're running a ticket there. And we have to come to the city to pay that. All the time we get a saltation because of the city. And how people they want you guys want city gonna people cooperate with you guys if you guys raise in everything. I've been living in City Garden Grove for twenty one years. I had two properties. You want the people ask me? Mr. Gonzalez, yes, sir. Can you please try to give me a chance to water your garden like that? I say, you know what? Just do it. But take take five minutes, ten minutes. But look at it. if I put five minutes water there. Look at the tree. How they look? I like to see your house nice and fancy. People walk by here, I want you to look at your house, it looks nice and green. Look at the way how hot it is. Because nobody wants to water their garden, their trees anymore. Because everything, you guys, the city are going to think about money, money, money. You have to give a break, you know, to pay our bills. You go to the store, when I came here to the United States, I go to the store I, with a hundred dollar. I fill it up two big cars. Now we cannot do that because we have to save money to pay the water bill. All the money go to the city. I went to different city. The water is less. Everything is only here. Here everything. And imagine now they want to race again. Every time they want to race, a race. City garden girl had to think about our community. How we improve ourselves? Imagine if you guys, how embarrassing it's going to be when people ask me, can I wash my car on the top of the, of, of the your front yard? Because I want to save you water. Say, wow. But if the police come here, they're going to give you a ticket. So, hey, you cannot do that. So what we can do? Wow, your car, no matter how to take it to the car wash. But I want to help you on this situation you have. Imagine you have a big, big front yard you have, how much water you have to use. But we don't have to, okay, if you give a notice to us, you don't have to water the backyard. It's going to be like that, but we don't get a saltation, it's fine. But if we don't have that, the front yard look ugly, brown, dirt, everything, Siri would tell no, oh, you have to take care of your, your front yard. And you guys raising our bills all the time? I don't think that's fair. One of you people here, you think that's fair? Hey. Oh, okay, it's just about, uh, go ahead and wrap it up. It's, uh, when a light red, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we've been allowing people to go over a couple minutes, but. Thank you ahead. for that, yeah. But, you know, I, I'm here, you know, and I don't think nobody here is happy. Uh, what are you guys doing to us? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, at this time I'll close the public hearing. 
Uh, we'll take a five-minute recess, and but please get back within five minutes so we can. Uh, just okay. The Garden Grove City Council meeting, and let the record show that all members are present. Uh, okay, we've closed the public hearing. Uh, comments from uh, council. Uh, we prepared to read the, the actual count of uh, protest. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Mr. Mayor and Council Members, at this time I would like to enter into the record the following in information. As of 5.30 p.m. on this date, the City Clerk's Office received a total of 54 written protests of the sewer rate adjustment. Since 5.30 p.m., an additional 34 written protests were received for a total of 88. There are 36,778 parcels served by the sanitary district and subject to the sewer rate adjustment. As a result, there is no majority protest of the sewer rate adjustment. As of 5.30 p.m. on this date, the city clerk's office received a total of 52 written protests of the water rate adjustment. <coughs> at 5.30 p.m., an additional 31 prote written protests were received for a total of 84. There are 34,920 parcels served by the city and subject to the rate adjustment. As a result, there is no majority protest of the water rate adjustment. Okay, thank you. Uh, members of council, comments? How about some responses to the questions? Does the staff have any comments? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Question from us? Sorry. Yes, I have a question. Go ahead. I think you wanted to ask something. Yeah. I, I, first of all, we buy water from two different agencies. What are the names of those agencies? Member Broadwater. Um, uh, the groundwater is uh, purchased from Orange County Water District, and uh, this this uh, we're currently uh, able to pump 65 percent of our production. Uh, our overall production is 65 percent not uh, 80 percent as uh, previously noted okay where's the other 35 percent and, and the from? other 35 percent is purchased from our uh, 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 municipal <laughs> water district of orange county represent uh, re representatives for uh, uh, metropolitan water district of uh, southern california okay and when we negotiate with them how do we negotiate do we, do we let them give us a bid or how, how much we want to pay for water or do they dictate to us? Okay. Um, we we uh, participate, uh, the water ma managers uh, from uh, 27 different retailers uh, attend these uh, municipal water district uh, 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 meetings uh, on a monthly basis in Fount Valley. Uh, municipal water district of Orange County uh, uh, represents uh, all of Orange County uh, at the uh, uh, at the they're, they're the third largest uh, uh, wholesale water district uh, you know that uh, uh, gets that water from uh, Metropolitan Water District so they they represent us at those uh, large meetings in uh, Los Angeles who represents us uh, Municipal Water District of Orange, Orange County. County yes okay MWDOC. Yes. Okay, and we get our we get pumping permission from Orange County Water District, correct? That's correct. Okay. Now, the Orange County Water District charges us for all the water we pump out of the ground. Is that also correct? That's correct. How much do they charge us per gallon? It's uh, two fifty four uh, per acre foot. Two hundred fifty four dollars per acre foot. Right. How many acre feet do we use? Let's uh, say in a day. Uh, I could better uh, answer that annually. Okay, let me ask you this, because let me ask you this. This rate that is set by the Orange County Water District. Yes. Do we have, do we say, uh, oh, that's too much, or we don't want to pay that much, or, I mean, do we have any negotiating, uh, way of negotiating with them at all? Yes, there's uh, discussions at these uh, monthly production. Do other cities have lower rates than we have? I'm sorry? Do other cities have lower rates than we have? No, they're all uh, consistent. So they've dictated the rate to all of us? Yes. Okay. As well as a percentage. As well as a percentage. Okay. How about, how about areas like uh, down in so South, South County where they do not have the ability to pump water? Where do they get their water from? 
The South County, uh, uh, about 77% of their water is import water, and uh, the rest they uh, get through recycling. Um, uh, a lot of the southern, southerly uh, cities are newer, and they've uh, installed uh, uh, recycling uh, water piping in their communities. And they're purple pipes. Purple pipes. Yes, okay. And so that, that's how they make up the, the rest of their Are their rates less than our rates? Absolutely not. Do they pay more money for water than we do? They do not. They do not? They do not. I'm surprised. Okay. Well, I like it. That's fine. I've asked. Well, let me back up for a second here. Uh, they they pay more in the sense that they don't have access to groundwater, which is cheaper. But uh, the ra the rate and then they are paying more money the, than the, we are. Yes, they are. The rate they pay per acre foot for import water is the same. Yeah, there's a number of cities in the county that buy the water, have their water done by the private sector. Stanton, Placentia, uh, are they paying less money than we are? Uh, no, they are not. They're well, actually, 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 Stanton is uh, paying uh, more because they purchase uh, water from uh, Golden State Water. Golden State Water supplies their. Uh, they don't purchase it from them. They, Golden State Water sells it to their citizens. Doesn't that, it? That's correct. That's okay. Correct. I mean, let's get that right. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Beg your pardon. Well, the point I'm trying to make is, we don't really set the price on this water. I'm trying to hear somebody say, yes, we do, but we don't, do we? No, I don't think so. You know, one lady got up here and said that we ought to negotiate this evening. And believe me, we'd love to negotiate. We'd love to tell them, hey, we're going to pump 100% of our water right out of the ground and we're not paying you a nickel for it. I mean, it belongs to us. We're sitting on it. But that water law has not come that way. It's surfaced a lot differently. They watch every, every gallon we pump out of the ground, and they make sure that we pay it to the Orange County Water District for it. We have to buy a certain amount of water from the Metropolitan Water System. We're forced to buy it. Even if we don't want to buy it, we have to buy a percentage from them. It's not something that we can make up our minds to. When we raise these water rates, do you think it's really fun for a politician to go out and say, please vote for me after he's raised the water rates? It's no fun at all. It's something that has to be done. It has to be done from time to time. We talked a lot about, I heard a lot of people saying how much money they paid for their water when they first got here and everything else. About two weeks ago, my wife called me at work and said, uh, Bruce, uh, the toilets are stopped up and the sink stopped up and I, I don't know what to do. And I said, just call Rotor Rooter Peg. I just, let's get this problem resolved. <laughs> Whatever it costs, get it done. Rotor Rooter, Rotor Rooter, I need you to let me talk. Everybody had a right to talk. So, I told her to find out what is wrong and everything else. Well, Rotor Rooter come out and couldn't do any good for us. They had to run a TV through the piping system. And they come out and they said, you need a whole new evacuation system. In other words, the, the plumbing is completely gone. Trees, roots grow, grown into it. It's clogged. It's, un, it's not able to be fixed unless you do the whole thing. I had to pay a, write a check for 9000 American dollars to get that fixed. I was not thrilled with it. The house, $9,000 was about one-third of what the house cost when it was sold first sold, 50, 1956. It was sold for less than 25000 And yet, now I'm paying a third of that just for a, not even for all the plumbing, just for half the plumbing, the, what, the evacuation part, not for new plumbing going in, just for the plumbing going out. What choice did I have? I mean, uh, they'd have been changing our name to Stinko Avenue if we hadn't fixed that toilet. You know? So, everything goes up. There's no cho we have no choice in it. It just does. You, no, no politician wants to raise rates. Nobody sitting here wants to raise rates. Last thing they want to do is raise rates. But I don't know how we're going to get by without it if we don't. Governor Brown just took $3.5 million a year from us. Just psh, snatched it. Nothing we can do about it. We're trying to save as much as we possibly can, but it's not looking good. I don't have much else to say. Yeah, I, I just want to add one comment. Uh, you know, a few years ago, we did increase the water rate, and it was high at the time. But the reason it was done and it was high was because past councils really didn't want to deal with the issue. It was easier to say, no, let the extra money come out of the general fund, let somebody else pay for it. And prior, and prior to that, the, the water rates had been raised two times in 20 years. I mean, who can... 
who would like, just think about it for a minute, what, if that was your wages and it was only increased two times in 20 years, you don't keep up with anything. Well, we certainly weren't able to keep up with what the water costs were to us. And as Mr. Broadwater said, I mean, nobody likes sitting up here saying we have to do this, but infrastructure is important. Last year, I think every week it seemed like that there were water mains blowing in L.A. because the infrastructure wasn't taken care of. Uh, sewers, water lines, they have to be replaced. The cost of water, I guarantee you that one day gas is going to be cheaper than water. I'm talking about gasoline. Everything, oil is going to be cheaper because water is going to be the most expensive thing we have. And there's nothing we can do about it. We pride, we have to live with it. Um, and it's expensive, and there's more and more people coming here, more and more needs, more and more homes being built. A few years ago, I think, um, the uh, Colorado River, there were states that had allotments that they didn't, weren't even using because their populations were so low. And now everybody that has in Nevada, all the other states that get their money from the Colorado River are getting their share. That cut down on water that was available to other people. It's going to cost a lot more. And what we're trying to do, as someone said here, try to keep the cost reasonable, as, as reasonable as we can. It's unfortunate. Nobody likes doing it. But it, no, it's just not a question answer period. It was time to have a uh, the uh, public hearing. You know, you were here that time. You should have spoken. I'm sorry, but uh, you know, we're looking at this, and and nobody wants to do it. Um, and believe me, you know, uh, we have kids, grandkids, <coughs> great grandkids, some of us, and we're paying water bills too for them and for uh, you know, not just drinking water. I, I agree with you and. Uh, we don't get it any cheaper because we sit up here, believe me. Okay, any, any other comments? Go ahead, Dina. Uh, I have another question for staff. I'm sure some of the um, residents will want clarification on this. The last time that we had water rate increase and we gave um, certain percentage in increments for those um, raises, do you, is that correct? And I wanted to know, did we use up all of the increments already? Yes, we did. When was the last increment? It was uh, 2011, July 1st. Last year. Okay. Uh, I want to make a comment regarding the last rate increase. Uh, I do recall not voting for that because I felt it was just too excessive for the resident to take on, I think the first blow was a 40 or 60 percent, and then it, you add them up, it, it's just uh, horrendous. I didn't go for that. But I do recall one council member um, making a comment regarding, you know, I said, why, why do they leave everything to, it's all very high, and then put it on the public? And he explained, like m the mayor said, that the former um, politicians or council members didn't want to deal with it, didn't want to look bad in the public eyes, and didn't want to be responsible about the cost of living until it, it, they leave. And then they, they left the new council with um, an issue. So this time, I don't, I have to be responsible for the next council to come in. I have to see that we do have an issue if we don't take care of it. Yes, it hurts. It hurts very much. It hurts my family too. And I get so disappointed every time I think about this because a lot of things that has happened at the state level and the federal le level that has harmed the city level of government and that has dig deep into the pockets of the city level of government. Uh, one of them happened just last month. They took away the tool that gave us um, an opportunity to make more money with the redevelopment agency, and now we no longer have it. And the other thing I heard tonight, seniors haven't had a raise for three years, the cost of living. That the federal government want us to take part of that responsibility to help out seniors. We've taken on a lot of that in other areas.
senior housing, senior um, care. This area of it, I don't think we can prolong helping out. And if we don't take that responsible step and approve a cost of living <coughs> structure that would help other um, council members in the future and, and, and help lay out a, a systematic way of um, dealing with the water rate without excessive increase and without uh, going beyond the index. The only thing I have for, uh, suggested tonight is between the two indexes, I would suggest that whenever we use, um, whenever there is a, um, a, a need to use the index, that we use the lower amount of the two indexes. Is that, uh, you understand what I'm suggesting? Well, we, we were just wanted, what we have in the ordinance is to just use the index as it relates to construction, because that's what we do. Is that always lower or is it oh, sometimes it's just, higher? It's just the most relevant to the actual cost of providing the service, I think. That's what we do. Well, in other words, if there's a spike in copper prices or something or commodity, some kind of commodity or something like that that would affect the actual I, delivery I of the service. Because I see construction and water. I, I don't see the relation. Well, I'm glad you asked that question, and if you don't mind me explaining it. But the when we put pipe in the ground, that pipe is plastic. It's made from a petroleum product. The, the equipment that you see out there, they're big, noisy equipment that's all running on petroleum products. The asphalt that we put back on top of the pipe is made out of a petroleum product. What is doubled or in cost in the last five or six years that everybody knows about is the price of gas. Uh, now, and when we deal with uh, construction, we, we hire uh, workers at the state-mandated prevailing wage. The prevailing wage has not gone down. I mean, if you had work done at your house and what have you, you get a great deal right now uh, if, uh, if you're hiring uh, non-union folks. But we're not able to do that. We've got, we, hire, we have non-union contractors and what have you, but they're still paid the union rate, which is a, what they call a prevailing wage. That is that has gone up. So all of those factors are, are what what directly contribute to the type of work that we do. Um, and as Council Member uh, Jones mentioned, the price of copper is is really outstanding. I think uh, what is a twenty foot length of copper pipe going for now uh, three hundred and thirty dollars? Something it, in that neighborhood. I mean, a, a copper penny, if it's made out of real copper, is worth more than a penny. That's why they're made out of tin now. <laughs> So for clarification, you're tying this in with the maintenance of the water yes. structure. Okay. Not just the water rate. Well, okay. the water pass-through is, is, is another part of it. And that's the, the, the import cost that we get. That, doesn't, that, that has to do with uh, uh, snow, snow packs and, and the uh, different things that affect the cost of the water that our larger provider charges us. Okay, and my next question, my, and that's my last one, is uh, are, you prepared, <laughs> are you prepared tonight to give us a f some samples of the last few years indexes compared to the consumer index, the difference between the two? Because I could be saying yes to the, the index that you say and it's like 2% higher than the consumer index or I mean, what's the difference? What's the ongoing um, trend? Uh, am I pre prepared tonight to differentiate between the two of those? Yes. I, I don't. Do you, does anybody happen to have that information? I don't have a CPI. Yeah, I don't think we have that tonight. Uh, we can run that comparison and bring it back. Mm, that, that's you. fine. I, but what we, what you, we you've did, seen did, it, and have you seen any of the rates being the difference more than a point? No, they're, they're about the same. Uh, Council no. member, when uh, we uh, are currently looking up that information on the laptop, so we'll have that for you in a minute. Oh, thank you very much. You're done? Okay, any other questions or comments? D quick question. If this passes tonight, when do we project a possible increase coming up? It's, it's crystal ball or hard to tell. 
commodities, all the other costs, anticipated increases. Excuse me. Can I keep it down a little like bit? Looks like we would uh, go into effect July 1st. July 1st? Okay. okay. It came up with 6%. So does that represent the price of the water increase as well as maintaining the system and all the other things you talked about? What was 6%? 6% annual <coughs> increase is the CPI maximum. Okay, explain that. That's the cap, the absolute yeah, yeah. maximum 6 cap. 6% per year, CPI or CCI, whatever you say. Right, so if it's 2.5%, then it's 2.5%. Okay. If for some reason in any given year it goes to 7%, we can only charge 6%. 6 yeah. It just provides an outside limit right. cap. Even though the actual to CCI might actually be 7%, this right. only came, provides for... Through our analysis, that's what we came up with. 6% is the, the, the best projection we could... Well, I think we're trying to just cost. build in some sort of a, a that, comfort. That's not a projection. It's just a cap. It's just to say so that to prevent there being a, a shock of any more than that amount of adjustment in any one period, I think. Yeah, the, our projection is, uh, is only about the same, about 2.5% okay. for the and next again, five years. And that's not... It's only automatic, and I think the words come out automatic. It's not going to be automatic. It's only as needed. Then we have to emphasize that. Yeah, the if first test the is there has to be a, an increase in the CCI for it to go into effect. Mm -hmm. And then if it does, it's the actual CCI. And then the last test would be, which we don't anticipate, that it could no, go no more than 6%, even if the actual is 7%. Right. And, and if, if it goes beyond 6%, then we have to, we as a city have to cover that cost, supplement basically that expense. That's correct. And, and as the colleagues have said earlier, it's uh, other councils may have kicked the can down the road and not made any increases to uh, this. It's in essence an enterprise fund. It keeps itself going, and we can't supplement it. Basically, we're in, well aware we're in tough times right now. So... Nobody wants to make an unpopular decision like this, but it, the inevitable or what's out there is, is what it is. And sad to say, it's really hard hearing about the citizens come forward on fixed incomes and the cost of living overall, gas, groceries. I know we're in the same situation of having to pay these costs. So um, it's, with, um, it's disheartening to have to do something like this, but we have to pay as we go. That's the other consideration we have to face right now. I mean, truly face. Uh, we talked about the limited revenues coming in or being taken away from our city. So even if we don't have the luxury or option of supplementing any of these costs, so we, we do unfortunately have to pay for them as we go. And that's the situation with the enterprise fund. And it's only automatic in the sense that we have to pay for it when we need it. And we have so limited control over the outside costs of, of certain commodities, as you heard tonight. So I'd say with reluctance, we're all in that situation. But... On the same token, I know the city's made efforts for conservation, and we'll have to look at means for, we heard some citizens talk about um, neighborhoods, uh, uh, the site of our neighborhoods, the lack of watering as a means of cost savings. So we have to be sensitive and concerned about water conservation overall. And I know I'm doing it myself, but even more, we have to tighten our belts even more to do something like that. So we have to work together in these tough times, unfortunately, to meet the needs of, of the system requirements to provide water in our sewer services. So just um, like I say, it's unfortunate, but I'm going to be voting for this measure for that reason. Okay. Is that a motion? I'll make that motion. For, for the record, there is a uh, Garden Grove Sanitary <coughs> District has one action and the City Council has the other. The first would be the action by the Garden Grove Sanitary District Board, and that would be to adopt the ordinance authorizing the sewer rate adjustments. Entertain a motion. So moved. Got a motion. Second. Second. Call for the vote. Motion received. Five yes votes. The second action would be city council action to introduce and conduct the first reading of the ordinance authorizing the uh, water rate adjustments. Okay. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. A motion. Second. Call for the vote. Motion received. Five yes votes. Okay, matters from uh, board members for the uh, sanitary district. Any comments or? No. No? Okay, then uh, we'll adjourn the uh, Garden Grove Sanitary District meeting until the new meeting on February 28th, 2012 at 6.30 p.m. in the council chambers. Okay, and we are to consent items on the council. Is that correct? That's correct. Mm-hmm.
Uh, so it's recommended that item 6A through 6H be acted on simultaneously unless a separate discussion is requested by a member. Move to approve. Okay, have a second. Motion. Have a motion, second, call for the vote. Motion received, five yes votes. Okay, 7B. Uh, Mr. Mayor, 7B is a public hearing to consider an amendment to uh, Plan Unit Development uh, 10571, and Susan Emery is here to give a staff report on this item. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of the City Council. This is a request to amend PUD. Could somebody please close the door? Thank you. This is a request to amend PUD 10571 revised 90 to add dray freight or trucking yards as permitted use subject to a conditional use permit. The specific location identified for the use is a truck trailer parking yard at 7272 Chapman Avenue. This is a large existing PUD in the industrial area bounded by Chapman, Western, Lamson, and Knott. In total, the entire PUD consists of 171 acres and it's divided into three areas, Area 1, Area 2, and Area 3, each of these allowing different uses. The site at the southwest corner of Chapman and Monarch is in Area 1, which allows for industrial uses. Dray freight and trucking yards are consistent with industrial uses and are allowed in the city's M1 and the MP zones, subject to conditional use permits. The proposed tenant space is a 37,000 square foot parking area, which is fenced and operated by A&M Trucking. Highcore Medical occupies a 46,000 square feet medical building to the north of the site. The code requires 92 parking space for that, use, for that use, and the site provides 128, leaving a large surplus of parking spaces. The site occupied by A&M will consist of 11 truck trailer parking spaces that are 61 by 12 feet. Six additional parking spaces are included, and they are the standard <coughs> size. A&M Trucking owns eight trucks and subleases two to three spaces for independent contractors. The company engages in long-haul trucking and drivers are usually out for three to four weeks at a time, thus leaving most of the spaces empty for most days each month. The standard parking spots are available for employee parking. The applicant is proposing hours of operation from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Saturday. The proposed use is not expected to generate sufficient noise or traffic to cause disruption to the area. Due to the potential circulation and intensification use issues, staff is proposing the use be added to the PUD as a conditionally permitted use. This will help to establish conditions for hours of operation, number of vehicles permitted on a site, security lighting, and any other land use concerns. Staff recommends that the City Council approve Code Amendment Number A165-11, revising PUD 10571, revised 90, and I will read to you the title of the ordinance. Okay, any questions for staff? No. Okay, I'll open a public hearing. Is there anyone here who would like to speak on this matter? That'll be quick. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. I, I think I have to read the title of the ordinance. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, an Next ordinance. Next time, a little quicker, please. Okay. I'm sorry. I know you. You were just so fast. Okay. An ordinance of the City Council of the City of Garden Grove approving Amendment Number A16511, <laughs> Amendment to Plan Unit Development Number PUD 10571, Revised 90, to allow dray freight or trucking yards subject to the approval of a conditional use permit. Are you done? I'm finished, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Any questions for staff? Just a basic yes, question. Sir. It's not going to turn into a truck stop, is it? I, trucking, it, it it's truck yard? I mean, there's no automotive repair. There's no, no sleepovers. No, it's, there's it's, nothing. No. It can't be anything remote. No. Remotely and they have a conditional use permit. So if they operate in violation of the conditions, we could revoke the conditional use permit. Okay, that's it. Okay, I'll open a public it's, hearing. Is there anyone here who'd like to speak on this? Charles Mitchell. One of the problems that we encountered when we were <coughs> volunteering for court enforcement was uh, dealing with a lot of the commercial trucks that are parked on the city streets. And the fact that uh, they're not allowed to do that, but a lot of them didn't have an adequate place to park their trucks uh, for overnight. A lot of them were using the parking lot behind the closed Vaughn's Pavilion, and uh, that was creating a problem also. Now, my question is this, uh, 
area that they're going to be using for uh, parking uh, big rigs, is that going to be strictly for one company or is it going to be open to others as well so it might get some of the trucks off of the streets? Okay, thank you. you want, if you want to come up and answer that? Yes. Sure. We do sublease it out to other uh, independent contracting company mm -hmm. to provide parking. That's the reason why uh, we uh, picked this place because of the uh, citation we'll be receiving from uh, Julie. And uh, we found that this place is uh, its best area to park a commercial truck. Okay, is there, you want to tell us a little bit about it? Uh, this is my dad. He's the applicant, and uh, our, fa our family own a trucking company. And uh, our office located is in Hoover and Garden Grove. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where the dispatching and then um, the uh, accounting is are at. And then we do not have a physical place in Garden Grove. Uh, we sublease this from, um, I believe it was Mayflower Company, and uh, from the uh, the agent saying that it was okay to park trucks. And then we got the lease, and now um, we're going through with the uh, CPU, try to get it approved so that way uh, we could park a truck in the city of Garden Grove uh, to comply. Okay, great. Council, anybody have a question? Yeah, how long have you been in the city? How long I've been in the city? Yeah, how long? Uh, my dad actually, we were at the Brookers and uh, Garden Grove, the Triangle Project. We had a shop there for 10 years. We lost the business due to the fact that the project was AM complete auto repair. And due to the the construction with the piping out, we lost a lot of business, and the city didn't give us money to move. So after that, we've been here for like close to 12 years or more, and just because of that, we lost the business, and we decided um, to go into trucking. And, and now we, this is not a business we have to deal with right now. Okay, Mr. Provo. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you had a question. Okay, thank you. Uh, anyone else like to speak on this matter? Okay, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. And I'll entertain a motion. Move the issue. Second. I have a motion and a second. Call for the vote. Motion to receive five yes votes. 7C. Mr. Mayor, 7C is a public <laughs> hearing to consider an amendment to the Garden Grove Municipal Code. And John Clark is here to give the staff report on this item. Thank you, Mr. Fertal. Uh, Mr. Mayor and honorable members of the council, this is the next to last title in the Municipal Code revision, oh. Title 14, dealing with water. And um, as with most of the other titles that we've brought forth, uh, most of the changes are of a housekeeping nature. Um, I would draw your attention to two changes. One is that a duplicative section in terms of wasting water is being deleted because that's covered under the water conservation chapter. And the threshold amount, much like Mr. Broadwater's situation, we've had to update it from $1963 to current dollars. So that will allow us to administratively approve water main extensions up to a threshold of $30,000. And uh, with that, I will read the title of the ordinance and be happy to answer any questions from the council. Um, reading into the record, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Garden Grove amending Title 14 of the Garden Grove Municipal Code to remove obsolete references to conform references to current <coughs> organization and practices to make consistent with recent changes in state and federal laws and to make other non-substantive changes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, this is also a public hearing. Yes. Uh, I'll open a public hearing. Is there anyone here who would like to speak on this? No, oh, sure. I will. Okay. Josh McIntosh. I didn't really understand the word you said. I don't think anyone else did either, but uh, I just want the council to consider the water park. We've got a giant water park here that's coming up with I don't know how many millions of gallons of water. I'm hoping that they're all going to be kept to the same standard uh, of water bill rates that we will all be uh, subjected to. I hope that everything's done fair. And uh, I don't know. It almost seems like we're, you know, we're bending over backwards. Does, to excuse me. Does this, does this deal with water? No. No? No. I thought I heard water. Title 14 is the the water part. part of the municipal code that deals with water in general. And that's taken it's not out. specific to the rate increase in those issues. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks, you Josh. Okay. I'll close the public hearing, and I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. A motion and second. Call for the vote. Motion received. Five yes votes. Okay. Nine or 9A. 
Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, 9A is an item for consideration to, to uh, consider uh, the appointments to the Oversight uh, Board as it relates to the um, successor agency, and Jim Delalonga is here to give a staff report on this item. Thank you, Mr. Fertal, uh, Mayor and members of the Council. The purpose of the, this report is to request that the Mayor appoint and the City Council adopt a resolution affirming those appointments to the Oversight Board of the City of Garden Grove as successor agency to the Garden Grove Agency for Community Development. Pursuant to AB 126 and the California Supreme Court's decision in California Redevelopment Association versus Mata Santos, redevelopment agencies in California, including the Garden Grove Agency for Community Development, were dissolved as of February 1, 2012. The City of Garden Grove has elected to become the successor agency to the Garden Grove Agency for Community Development. AB 126 outlines the process to fulfill redevelopment agency obligations and to wind down its affairs. Part of that process involves the formation of an oversight board which will oversee the activities of the successor agency in regards to the enforceable obligations and the winding down of the agency's affairs. The oversight board is to be composed of seven members as follows. Two members appointed by the Orange County Board of Supervisors, one member appointed by the mayor, one member appointed by the largest special district by property tax share with territory and the territorial jurisdiction of the agency, one member appointed by the Orange County Superintendent of Education, one member appointed by the Chancellor of the California Community Colleges, and also one member appointed by the Mayor representing the employees of the agency and from the rec recognized employee organization representing the largest number of former agency employees employed by the successor agency. A mouthful. Mm -hmm. Go back to that point where you said tax uh, has the biggest tax share. That would be that would be that could be the special districts such as the sanitary district, the orange. But they don't have a tax district. share, do they? Well, I guess they do. Yeah. yeah. Look at your bill. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I was looking at it from a property tax thing. Mm -hmm. So my recommendation is that, or our recommendation, <coughs> staff recommends that the City Council <coughs> adopt the attached resolution affirming the Mayor's selection and appointment of Mayor Dalton and Paul Guerrero to the Oversight Board pursuant to, pursuant to Section 34179 of the Dissolution Act. That concludes my presentation and staff is available to answer questions. No questions? Okay, he nominated. Well, Does it require a second and a vote? Well, it requires a, a, a motion to uh, I'll, adopt the resolution. I'll make a motion that we United. appoint the mayor and Paul. Second. second. Okay. Motion received, five yes votes. Okay. That's everything, I think. Bruce, you have anything? I have nothing this evening. Yeah? No, I have nothing this evening either. Okay. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. Yeah, I had my ha I have my Happy Valentine's Day tie on here, but nobody noticed it. He made it himself. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. If there's nothing else, then uh, we'll adjourn the meeting till the next. Excuse me. Oh. See you in two weeks. Our next regular meeting of the Garden Grove City Council Tuesday, February 28th, 2012, at 5:30 p.m. in the Council Chambers. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I went there and I. Think you know that the money. You would. <laughs>